used for um, brazing and uh, dissimilar metals. That, that's exactly right. If I have copper to brass, copper to steel, if I use a low content of silver, it's not going to flow between the two. It's not going to braze. So I want to use a higher concentration, silver concentration. This happens to be 45%. That will do that, Kyle. Uh, Silfox usually comes up to 15%. You're probably not going to get the flow correctly with the 15% or less. Okay. Yes. You notice when you was uh, had the heat on the pipe, you had it on the, the male part versus the female? Right. You, you want to go to the, the part where you want it to draw into. Okay. And the, the, uh, the filler material will draw towards the heat. So either the more massive or the part that you want it to flow to. Okay. This um, this um, fitting seems to be a lot stronger than the. Absolutely, much stronger. In fact, uh, one of the problems with regular solder mm -hmm. is it will crack. It'll crack at the joint. This won't won't crack. The pipe will break before the before the joint does. Okay. And I need. A couple of those back up here, please. Uh oh. Well, what you said about uh, wiping the flux off because of the road, what happens to the flux that's inside? Does it push back out? It, it should, shouldn't be in there because we, we stop before we go all the way up to the end of the pipe. We try to stay about an eighth inch away from it. Yeah, yeah, not inside, right inside the cup. Okay, but, but, okay, but that should be uh, only where the solder's at. Okay, it shouldn't go into the pipe itself. Yeah, but does the solder push the flux back out? Uh, you know, I've never been asked that, and I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's what I was wondering what yeah. happens to the flux that's yeah. in between the two joints that the yeah. solder should I, I don't know. To be, to be quite honest with you, I've I never had that one come up, but I. I don't know if it gets uh, dispersed in the process or or what happens there. I have to look into that. Okay. You, uh, you, you said the position of your, of your pipes, it don't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say the, the male is coming in to the female. This right. How would it pull in? Okay. To it, it okay. Up? It's actually capillary so, action. Uh, yeah. Capillary action will pull it up. Okay. Yeah. And, and, you know, out here in the field, you don't have a choice. Yeah, you, you can't, can't turn the unit upside down. <laughs> yeah. maybe, maybe the house. <laughs> but uh, so you got to be able to do this in any position. Right. Okay. Uh, the next one I'm about to do is going to be the silk box. Now, what I have here, soft solder joint, right? It's going to melt when it gets up to around six, seven hundred degrees. So. I can't let that happen. So what am I going to do to keep that from happening? How about that? I got this wet rag. We'll put it around there. Protect that. That would just be like a component in the system that we can't overheat. Okay? Now, I could. I could put the heat block. But let me say this about the heat block. Once you put this stuff on, if you get it into a place that you need to sort or a braze, you're in trouble. I don't know what it is, but it's, it gets down into the metal pores itself, and I have had a lot of difficulty getting it cleaned up if it got into a place that I needed to sort or a braze. So, yes, you could use this. In fact, we'll put a little bit there. So most of the time you got something like that if you're trying to protect something. Yeah, you, you can use that. I'm using both here. <laughs> and that's not a bad thing either. But uh, you definitely don't want to get it on what you're trying to put together. How uh, much would you use? Doesn't take because much at all. Just, just enough to go around, make it look around. <laughs> all right. What I love to see is go behind folks that have been on a job and leave little pieces of this around. Mm -hmm. Because I put them together and use them. <laughs> so don't be throwing the stuff away unless you, if you do, let me know where you're going to be so I can 
from behind you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's let's do this particular one now. You know something I didn't mention a while ago. <coughs> Just hit me. These are right hand threads. These are left hand threads. You know how I can tell? Yeah. Notch on there. Say a little notch. Okay. They're, they're done that way so that you cannot interchange them, okay, for your protection, so to speak. So when you see the notches right there, remember that's left-hand threads. If you get ready to change this out, don't be trying to tighten it up when you, when you, when you, when you really want to loosen it or vice versa. Okay, keep that in mind. In a situation that I got electrical panel on this back side. Okay, I talked about how far this tip's really out here, right? I don't want to go over here and melt a whole bunch of wires. Well, I need to do some protection back here, right? But I still don't want to depend entirely upon my, my, my protection plate to, to get rid of the heat. So let's do something. Let's modify our rod. Okay? Let's keep the heat away from that panel. Because we done the raising right there doesn't mean that this part's not hot. Okay. I'm gonna pass this around for a little inspection after we get it cooled off. And touch this make sure it's not too hot for you. Now, what you just did, you couldn't solder that other end, could you? Uh, because you had the heat block on your rag, and when you cleaned it off, you brought it up to that tip up there. Yeah. So that would actually, if you had, a, had to solder this end down there, you'd be in trouble. Well, I would have had to move it and put the heat on that particular joint, but uh, the heat block just wouldn't let it go past, let the heat transfer. I'm saying, when you cleaned it out just then, yeah. you moved it on that rag and, right. and put it up on that pipe. Yeah. So you would have a problem on this end now. Uh, probably so. Now, that that is soluble by water, so I mean, it, it will wash off by water. Oh. I just don't want to get it in that joint by right. any means, okay? Okay. I, I see what you're saying. Okay. Couple of things I do need to point out. Copper becomes work hardened over time. Time and vibration will make it get brittle. One way to take that uh, hardness out of it is to anneal it. What that means is to heat it up until it's cherry red and then uh, let it cool off naturally. If I douse it with a rag or something like that, I actually put the hardness back in it. Now, if you have a flare that has split and you try to reflare that place, it's probably going to split with you again unless you anneal it, get that softness back in it, okay? So be aware of that. Um, I've seen that happen more than once. People try to go back and flare a place that has split out and then several days later they're right back at the same job again wondering what in the world happened. They didn't anneal it. They didn't bring the softness back in there. It's not hard to do. Just need a little, take a little time, heat it up, let it cool off on its own. Not a problem. Okay. Uh, I need a larger piece of copper. Do we have a larger piece of copper over there? Can we get, get rid of everything? <laughs> 
Uh, I often have a question come up. Can I melt that copper? The answer is yes. And I'm going to show you how that can be done. Now, I also want to show you something else that happens within the copper. We can see this very much so with the torch that I'm going to use. It doesn't matter whether it be this torch or this one, but I'm, I'm, I can get a little heat spread out a little better with this one right now. Tell me what you see on the inside of that pipe. Hopefully it's fairly clean. <laughs> Okay, but it's pretty clean overall. Okay, now oxidation it takes place on the inside and the outside. Okay. Nitrogen, having nitrogen run through there while you're doing this process is a must. All right? What's the nitrogen do? It prevents oxidation by displacing the oxygen that would be inside the pipe. Okay, now I want to purposely show you what can happen if I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing with my torch. I have got pretty doggone hot flame. I'm not going to move my torch around. You'll hear it change. I got a hope. Now, I don't recommend this, but I want to show you. 